and me. And um, I'm Charlie, the lead pastor here, man. We're really glad you're here. We're wrapping up this series uh, called Response. We're just kind of been talking about really kind of our worship service as a whole and really kind of what's the proper way to kind of respond at the end and kind of what's happening. And we talked, kicked it off a couple weeks ago, and we were just talking about this idea that really we should come here with the anticipation that God is going to speak in some way, that God is going to, to, to move in your life. And we shouldn't let that just be ordinary, but that's actually extraordinary. We need to prepare for it. And at some point during the worship, during the message, God's going to lay something on your heart, some, some change he's wanting to make. And so when that happens, and so then we need to respond in some way. We talked about the need just kind of to meditate and reflect and to worship. And, and then Mark last week comes back. He's talking about... Um, talking about communion and kind of this, this, this powerful moment that we have to kind of reflect and remember and, and celebrate the sacrifice that Jesus did for us. And so this is, we always have it available at the end of the, at the, end of the service for people uh, as, we, um, as, you know, as we finish up worship. And so we're closing it out today. We're going to talk, we're going to talk a little bit about, we're going to talk a little bit about prayer. And anytime, anytime I talk about prayer, there's this thing that comes to mind. I try not to talk about it every time here because I, want you, I don't want you to think that I only have one thing to say about prayer. But there, there's this illustration that I have that I really like. And so there's new people, and I think it's been a couple of years since I've, since I've used it. Um, and it has to do with, with getting Sonic drinks for my kids, right? Um, and, and this week, I actually was able to illustrate this a lot because it's kind of a, a crazy week. Um, uh, and I ended up picking up Layla, our first grader, from school three times this week. And it was a crazy week because, first of all, we, we, we just got back on Monday, uh, late Monday night from a cruise. And so we're all still a little bit, you know, have you ever been on a cruise and you come back and you're like, like the boat's still rocking, but you ain't on the boat no more? Okay, anyway, so a little bit of that, a little, little bit of tired. And so it was kind of a crazy week kind of, kind of get back. And then something happened. Middle of this week, I'm going to take a time. I'm a dad. I can do this if I want to. Um, our daughter, our middle daughter, Lauren, who's a senior at FHS, was um, elected, nominated, appointed, voted as the color of the day queen for, um, for all of FHS, which is really awesome. And, um, and so as such, there's all sorts of things, once you become royalty, that have to happen and uh, she and her mom and her sister have been doing that. So Layla and I have been hanging out a lot. And so I've been picking her up from school. And anyway, so we, so, you know, so, so anyway, so I've been, we've been going to Sonic, right? And so the way that I talk about this, and this is kind of the connection between me getting Sonic drinks for my kids and, and prayer. It says, you know, I, I pick up at school and say, I mean, the question is, are we going to go get Sonic drinks? And so there's kind of two things we think about. Does Layla ask? Does she not ask? Am I planning on doing it anyway, or am I not planning on doing it anyway? Okay? So you can imagine this kind of these four quadrants. So on the one hand, there's the one where I'm planning on going to Sonic anyway, and she asks. So what, what do you think happens? Do we go to Sonic or not? Yeah, of course we do. Dad, we should go to Sonic. You're right. We totally should. And so boom, 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 we go to Sonic. All right? That was the first day. The second day, I really wasn't feeling it. I was really wanting to get home. And so uh, we got in the car. She didn't ask if we should go to Sonic or not. And I wasn't planning on going to Sonic. Should we go to Sonic? No. Okay. Day three, I was thinking, we need some Sonic. And she didn't ask. Do we go to Sonic? Oh, yeah, we do. Right? And, and so, so, again, so we kind of think about this about prayer. You may be thinking sometimes, like, man, does, does prayer really make a difference? Oh, yeah, I pray. Maybe God was just going to do this anyway. So we have that category. God was planning on doing something really cool for me. I asked him to do the cool thing for me, and he did it. It doesn't really matter whether or not God was planning on doing it. It's just really cool. The, God did the cool thing. And then there's some times in your life where something really good doesn't happen, but you didn't pray about it, and so you can't really, you really shouldn't shouldn't blame God about it. And then there are some times you don't pray about it and God does the great thing in your life anyway. It's crazy. Right? But then there's a fourth category, and I only picked her up three times, so we never really had this one. The fourth category is, I'm not necessarily planning on it. 
GPS bad when we go to Sonic? Do we or do we not go to Sonic that day? which are knowable to her, some of which are unknowable. And so I think it's important for us as we start thinking about prayer, that sometimes I think we get ca- caught up on the wrong things and we try to overanalyze things. And, and we don't, we, we're not able to kind of put all this in, in, in kind of in its proper category. Because I think, it, I, think, I think, again, our little sonic grid here is helpful. Because I would like to ask you, since kind of just kind of in some personal reflection time right now, to ask yourself, what percentage of your life falls into the category of you didn't ask for the sonic thing, but God gives it anyway? Where blessings and awesome things happen to you that you did not pray for. How much of your life is that? I think it is. How about every breath of your life? How about just living in relationship with God and and, and just the general blessings of friendship and family and provision, things that you think we don't know, are always praying about. And really, we should think of ourselves as living in the God gives me good things whether I ask or not category. And if, and if we believe that, then, then our perception about everything else, um, it, it will change. And we'll recognize, really, my life is full of God's blessings. And so then when I end up in the category where I ask for something and maybe God doesn't, doesn't deliver it in the way that I think that he should, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't let that get me to a bad place because I'm, I, I just live every moment of my day recognizing that I live with a very, very generous God. So you imagine the fourth hypothetical. Dad, can we go to Sonic? And I say, no, we can't go to Sonic. She can react one of two ways, right? She can react, you know, she can get really upset, or that shows that she doesn't recognize how much Sonic that kid gets, right? And how much, and just other things. But, but again, I love my kids, and they're awesome, and it is very rare in those circumstances where I get anything other than, okay, Dad, because they live and they know that they are blessed. And so that's the kind of attitude that we need to have as we're kind of wrestling and processing with prayer. And then even still, even still, um, we need to not overthink it. We need to not overthink it. Well, I mean, you think, well, I prayed, God, maybe he's going to do it anyway. Just pray. See what God does. And just enjoy and trust what he does. All right, so that is a very long intro and a really weird sonic illustration. But let's go to our passage that that talks about prayer here in James chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. James 5, 13 to 18. Verse 13. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced crops. So James is a little bit all over the map there. I mean, it's really not just kind of like one cohesive point that he's making. But he's obviously talking about prayer, and he has a lot to say about it. A lot to say about prayer and praying for other people and the effectiveness of prayer. And he ends it with this illustration about Elijah who is kind of considered this, this, this legend, kind of one of the top five legends of the Old Testament. And James kind of makes it clear, now you need to understand, you know, he's kind of a legend, but really he was just a dude. And this dude, he prayed, and rain stopped. He prayed, and rain started again. And 
And so he is just kind of building this case. And again, he's kind of putting a lot of different things together. I'm going to try to put the pieces of this together a little bit. But really, I think his big picture point is a very simple one, which is this, is that prayer is effective. Prayer is effective. Prayer does what you say is going to do. You pray for something, it happens. Prayer works. It's effective. You pray for things, and the hand of God moves. That's just a principle that we need to live with. You just need to say, okay, that's what happens. Prayer works. It's effective. I pray, God moves. And so then this is where what we're supposed to do. What we're supposed to do, being uh, evangelical Christians in the Bible Belt, what we're supposed to do right now at this point is like, well, but here's what you need to know, and there's this category, and you need to understand this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. And sometimes, you know, it just doesn't quite work, right? That's what we're supposed to do. Can we just not, at least just for a minute, and can we just hang out here for a little bit? And, and recognize that what God has promised all throughout Scripture is that prayers prayed in faith to a God that loves and trusts you be heard and answered. And, and, and we need to believe that. I believe that my girls believe that. That if they ask dad with a good attitude and a grateful heart, no whining, no fussing, they're sweet, they've been good, they haven't been giving me or mom any lip, Dad can, they know that my heart is for safety. Sometimes dads are like that. But what they know about their dad is that their dad has a heart for them. And I think it is important for us, whatever it is that you think, that we live in relationship with a God who has a heart There's exceptions. Of course there are. But do you live the life where prayer doesn't really matter? God's going to do what he's going to do anyway. Prayer doesn't really matter because God's really not, uh, he doesn't really care that much. Or do you live with an attitude that says, I believe that the God of the universe hears me, loves me, and his heart is for salvation. And my guess is, is there's a lot of people in this room we just need to adjust that a little bit. And there's other people in this room that need to adjust that a lot of bit. And we need to get to a point to where we really believe in our heart that when I pray, the hand of God moves. And I'm not one of those, oh, God's probably going to answer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is that God blesses you. That's what matters. And that you have a God who is, again, you live in that quadrant where he is overwhelming you with blessings for things that you and I don't see. And, and Jesus said, look, it's just sometimes you don't have things because you don't ask for them. And if you asked, you would, you would have. Now, again, just for a minute. I said, I said just for a minute. Just for a minute, we were going to talk about prayer. That was it. There's lots of things that my kids would never ask me for because they know it's inconsistent with who I am and in, inconsistent with who I want them to be. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's a degree in which they match. You can't ask God for anything. He's not your, he's, he's, he's not going to pull the string and make God do whatever you want him to do. We don't own him all of a sudden. He doesn't change his character and his values all of a sudden. Right? So there's, there's that bit of it. And then there's just the reality is sometimes God stepped in some things going on, and he's working some plan that you don't know about. And I 
prayed for something, and the thing that I wanted to happen didn't happen when I wanted it to. Do I trust in the good God and his heart and system? And here's the thing that I want to make sure that every person in this room knows. You're going through some hard time. There's something that the Lord's prodding you to do. You are holding back the Lord's truth at a moment that is truly trying. But if you will pray and give something to God and, and, and trust him with it, and I pray and I give it to him at a minimum, you will experience the relief of anxiety. You will experience the overwhelming trust and peace that comes from God. At a minimum, you are moving it from one category to another. You're moving it from, I may be charged with this, to God's in charge of this. And now I can trust that the God of the universe who loves me and whose heart is to save me, whose heart is to move on my behalf, has now taken control of this situation. I know for certain. It's not in that category. I don't know. I didn't ask, and I don't know what God's going to do. I have asked, and now I know for certain. God knows what I want. I have laid it out to him, and I know he's in control. He was in control before you prayed. There's no confusion there. You praying doesn't put God in control. But now you know it. And that's why one of the most common things associated, common kind of blessings associated with prayer are peace and relief from anxiety. At a minimum, that's what you will feel. But more often than not, what you are going to feel is the hand of God moving on this in powerful ways. And you're going to have joy and security in it. And, and, and it's really interesting, you know, and it, it, it really, it's, it's really cool when you see people kind of get to the point. And sometimes people are like, man, you won't believe it. The person was sick. And I prayed for them, and they got better. And there's kind of this big shock that comes with it. And then it's, then it's just really cool when the change happens. When you just start to live and believe. Yeah, man, the person was sick, and we prayed for them, and God healed them. Not that it's casual. Not that it's not a big deal all of a sudden. But we stop being surprised when God shows up in our life. It's not that our prayers are going unanswered at this point. It's the prayers are going unanswered by the hand of God. Let me just end with this. Trust isn't a light word. You can trust God that there is some place of God for you. you're wondering, I know, you know, make sure we talk about prayer, we talk about prayer. Um, anybody, anybody grow up, anybody grow up going to fancy church? I'm not going to say that word. I'm not going to say that word. I don't know if you know the story of prayer, you know, like, like, like there's two prayers during the service. It's the pastor's word, he's the calling prayer. And there's usually some, some, some deacon that's leading that prayer. And everybody kind of had their own, their own style. But everybody's style was similar in the, in the sense that, that, um, words. Everybody had their own special phrasing that they would use, you know, if you want to ask your preacher to come and, and do this morning, you've got to shout this out, you've got to shout this out. I don't know, whatever. Everybody kind of had their own style. And I, and I never will forget, man, I was like 12 or 13, it's like after church one day, the pastor was like, would it be okay, sir, to attend our like call to duty meeting? Okay, and then I knew, man, I'm in. That's right. We're going to be some stuff. So I'm working on it, right? I'm practicing. I'm practicing. I got to come up with my own closing, right? I got, I got, I have my own little, my own little shtick, right? I got to have my own thing. Because prayer is complicated, right? It takes fancy words and fancy people who who know a lot of fancy Bible.
final word, and we're able to see him again, right? Ha, 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 you won it. Right? You say, ha, 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 you won because you believe it. You functionally believe it. God, I'm struggling here. Can you help a brother out? Amen. Does he hear that prayer? Yes, he does. You don't have to be complicated. You don't have to be theologically astute. It can be, dude, help a brother out, please. And you don't even have to finish it with amen. He'll know you're done. All these obstacles, all these obstacles that we have that keep us from a very simple principle, prayer is effective. There's also another really cool point that he makes here in verse 13. He says this, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Um, If something bad happened to you, you should totally talk to God about it. If things are good, you know what you should do. You should talk to God about it. Prayer is important in all seasons, all of them important in all seasons. Now again, we're going to talk about there's, you know, there's, you know, there's two categories of people and probably a third that we add. There's some people who have a hard time praying. If things are good, it's like, man, I don't, I, if things are good, you just kind of keep going. There's nothing, there's nothing to pray about. Things are good. Well, if things are good, we need to make sure that we're acknowledging the one who is good and the one for whom all good things flow from him. It's important in that season. There's some of us like, oh, I don't think we should. I don't really think about praying. I pray when things get bad. But then there's some of us who are all church and, and praying and thanksgiving and stuff when things are good. And when things are bad, like God's not on my team anymore. And I get really mad at him and now I'm not praying. And then, of course, there's the third category of people who just need to shut up. Right? But prayer is important in all of these things. It is important for you, at a minimum, to keep the relationship going. It's important in good times because you want to acknowledge and give credit and, 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 and build this relationship with the one who is blessing you. And it's important in hard times because it is important for you to remember that God has you. And it is important to make sure that you are taking the burdens that you have and you're not living with a burden that God does not intend for you to have. You're carrying it around with you on your own when God intended all along for you to give it to him so he could deal with it. And this attitude, whether it happens in good times, bad times, or for some of you both, this attitude of you've got it, you know, things are good because I am I got this, I got this. Things are bad, man, I got to take charge of this. I got I to gotta make sure I fix this. We've got to be bringing God into that situation, and it has to be a lot less I got you and a, and a lot more I, I, I give you. Man, life is good, God. I, I give you the praise. I'm, I'm struggling right now, God. I give you the praise in this. Are you building relationship? Are you being overwhelmed? by his peace, and anxiety moves away, and you see God show up in ways that you ask, in ways better than you ask, in ways differently than you ask, that God always shows up in ways that you never expected. Sometimes we don't go to prayer. both in the good times and in struggling times. To build this discipline of being someone who is taking the things that are happening to you and immediately giving God the credit. Whether it's praise or blame, you're giving God the credit. So prayer is effective. Prayer is important in all seasons. Let me go back to your cue. 
<laughs> talked about the need for the elders to come and, and, and pray for you if you're sick. And in verse 16, it says, therefore, confess your sins to each other. And this is this, and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And so what we'll end up on, we'll end up with this. Is that having someone pray for you, then it's healing. Now he is talking, in, at least in part here, about a physical healing in a physical sense. And I do believe that that is incredibly important. It is incredibly important to, when you are sick, to get other people involved in praying. I made a very simple principle here. That getting other people praying for you brings physical healing. But I would like to suggest, not in minimizing that or in discounting that or setting that aside, I want to suggest that what James is talking about here is a lot more than that. I had a cold, somebody prayed for me, I don't need to see. That's awesome. But I'm saying that there is a deeper sense of healing that comes when you have people pray for you. Now, there's this thing that we do, and Mark mentioned it in the intro. I'm going to mention it again, and I'm going to spend several minutes now talking about this. We have this at the end of every service. There are people here who get here before I do that are here praying over this entire building. And then there is always someone during the service who is praying for the entire service. And then there are people who, after the sermon, during at the end, that are back there continuing to pray, and if you want it, would specifically pray for you if you don't want it. Now, I get us. I know who we are. I'm not confused. Some of you are new. I'm not new. I've been around a long time. And for some of us, that just means we're new. And maybe it's because of the church you grew up in. In the church I grew up in, the pastor was available down front for prayer, but it was really kind of limited. It was really mostly for the fact that you, if you wanted to give your life to Jesus. That was it. It was a salvation thing, right? And so I was like, I, I don't need to get saved, so I'm not going to go back there and, and pray. Some of us maybe grew up in a tradition where to go back during prayer was, was sin confession. Right? And I, I don't know who's back there. I don't know if it matters if I know who's back there. I've got sin to confess, but it ain't for me. Right? That, that ain't what I'm doing today. I came to church for something. It wasn't to tell somebody I don't know what I did last night. That's not why I'm here today. I'm here to deal with the thing I did yesterday, but I'm here to tell them about it, right? And so that's not what we want to do either. If you wanted to do either of those things, it would be perfectly fine. There would be more than enough of a sermon about how to become more like Christ. Salvation is just the beginning step of that. And they would very gladly hear your confession and pray for you so that you could be healed. It would, they would love to do that. They would love to do that. But really... You can go back there and just talk to them anyway. And just and just ask them to pray for you. And I'm telling you, there is a power that James is talking about of healing and, 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 and emotion and just kind of connectedness to the Spirit, especially if you find yourself in a situation where you're not even sure where to begin with God. I'm so overwhelmed, I don't even know what I would say to God. And someone who is just emotionally, a little emotionally distant from me, but loves you, loves this church, and loves God, can come and pray for you. Like, I, I've said this before over here, and I'm going to say it again. I don't know if you've never had someone with a gift of prayer pray over you. You are missing out on, on a moment of healing and restoration and connection. It, it, I would just be doing you a huge disservice if I didn't hype this up for you and didn't keep pressuring you and pushing you to do that. If there is something awesome out there that you're not experiencing. And I'll never forget, I was at this church in South Carolina. The first time I saw a church for Desert Eagle. They had the communion set up. They had people to pray for you. They had all these different things we could do. They had a cross where you could go pray. Like all these cool things. I'm like, I like this. Now I'm never in charge of church. We're going to do this. And there was this praying. It's like, I didn't know anybody at this church in South Carolina. All these people was like, I'm just going to go have some people pray for me. I just got in a line. It was lines. It was lines. Like, notably, there's lines where I, I don't know who's in line. I introduced myself to them. I was like, man, I just think this God with this church is, 
Arkansas and uh, I just I, I just I just like the see I'm nosy. Right. And then this couple they they each put a hand on my shoulder and they both prayed for me. And I was overwhelmingly encouraged. I didn't come in there with some burden. But they prayed over me and I left feeling amazing. It was encouraging. And then there are people in our church right now, like this even happened today. Roger, who heads up this prayer team, he comes up to me and he's like, is everything going on all right with you? I don't even know really how to answer that. Especially to prayer person. God woke me up twice last week and said, yeah, it's kind of a bit of an open question right now. Yeah, I think it's kind of still open, but there's a lot of things I need to work on. That happened. And I've got people in my life that, especially on Sunday morning, it happened. It didn't happen every Sunday morning. It happens in life. But there's not a whole lot of people. Imagine you're a pastor of a church, right, or a pastor of a church, and, and you wake up that morning, maybe you're kind of feeling it. That never happens to me. Imagine this for a second. And you have people that you trust. It's like, man, I trust this person. I don't know what's going on. It feels okay. It feels good. And you pray for them. I don't know what you're supposed to be. Tell me about it. And you feel you feel healed. I was telling Skip this. You know, when I was pastoring a church in Lubbock, the church that really came here and this 19-year-old boy in our church had committed suicide. And um, I mean, I don't have to get into a whole lot of explanation of how that just kind of ended up in the church and how he felt. And, you know, 48 hours or so there after he got saved, just hearing him and with his family receiving the gospel at the end, just with all of the emotion and trust and just trying to love and serve the church well, and, I mean, it was just, it was just, let's say, it was a very long, long day. And then finally, I think this was about Monday, sitting in church that Sunday, just kind of reflecting on it as a church, and we've got extra prayer team people that were that day, and they're saying, can we pray that we'll have a time of that day, and we close it out, and I sat down for a second, and I was like, you know, and I, I do this, I fantasize about what this day's going to be about 6 4 3 6 and I just had a big old yawn and and I wa- I walk I walked up there and I'm going to be honest with you and I am I am so nosy I don't know that I needed to say anything I just walked up to them put my arms around them and sobbed uncontrollably for 3 minutes Furthermore, I should be handing them off to the people in my life who would love to serve the church. And so I encourage you right now. I'm going to worship and continue down here with our worship service. I would encourage you at a very minimum to really take the things, whether they're good or bad or both, and give them the same attention. And I would encourage you, whether you come here with a burden or no burden at all, I would encourage you to find one of the people in the back and just ask them to pray for you about one thing. And just see see if I'm right in telling you how incredible it is to have someone with the gift of prayer to pray with you. Because I'm telling you, there, there is a gap between where our lives are and what they could be. And I believe that gap just this morning. Thank you that we're not left here just trying to figure it out on our own, God. I, I thank you that that the burdens in my, my my life aren't left up to me. And God, I'm thankful that that you're.
there are times in my life God has laid down and said, hey, you know what? Let's try. God wants to try to tap in. You know, God, what you have left us is powerful tools of real connection that move your heart and your mind. And so, God, I pray that we would use it in our own personal lives. And then, God, just whatever fear that we have, that keeps us from really allowing other people in to pray with us and for us. God, I pray you would pull it. 